Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank um, the uh, organizer, the Polytech uh, Green Tech uh, Project Management Office and the Research Institute uh, to give me an opportunity to speak to you today uh, about future-proof cities. Uh, I'm Wilfred Lau uh, from the um, engineering firm Ovarup and Partners. First seen the first skyscraper was built in 1885 Modern cities have been developing in three-dimensional manner, reaching higher and going deeper, maximizing the use of airspace and underground space. To serve this population, cities have to rely on various social, economical, and infrastructural system. Throughout the centuries, cities have developed multidisciplinary system to provide essential infrastructural and other services for the cities to function properly and effectively. This city system have grown from the initial simple beneath the ground drainage system to become very complex. They are also intricate with other non-tangible system. Smart city and AR provide the opportunity for digital twin concept to apply to city planning and design. Singapore is one of the leading cities in the world in this field. Digital twin model is not just a digital model for visualization, but it's the ecosystem that could be used to develop replica of scenario testing to assess how a city responds to future changes and challenges. With digital twin, we could harness the power of data and real-time simulation to develop insight-driven policy and strategy for more responsive and agile governance by the city administrator. A smart city concept takes place in cities around the world, helping to shape our environment, our mobility, our lifestyle and city governance, etc. We must ask the question, is relying on digital technology and being smart alone sufficient to ensure the continuous development of our city to meet with current issue and deal with future challenges? Let's take a look at some of the cities around the world that have experienced urban decay throughout the passage of time. I'm sure many of you have visited Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Angkor Wat was the capital of the Kahim Empire in the 9th to the 15th century. And Angkor was one of the largest pre-industrial city in the world with an area of 1,000 square kilometer and supporting a population of 1 million people in the 9th to 15th century. As a mega city, Anchor has an elaborate infrastructural system and was considered to be an hydraulic city because it had a complicated water management network, which was used for systematically stabilizing, storing, and distributing water throughout the large city. This network supports the increasing population and also offset the um, predictable monsoon season to protect the city. There are many reasons for the decline and ultimate abandonment of Wenka War, like for example, wars, erosion of the religion, neglect of the public works and natural disasters. But recent research by Australian archeologists suggests that the decline may have been caused by climate change. In the 14th century, Anchor began to suffer from a persistent drought this was followed by several years of unusually strong monsoon rain, producing extensively flooding that caused serious erosion and damage to the city infrastructure and water system, and cutting the link of the canal system. It has long been thought that the damage to the water management system put an end to the long period of the decline of anchor, as said by National Geography. To future-proof city, the smart green resilient planning and design philosophy could transcend cities to future for sustainable development physically, economically, and socially. 
truly smart cities are resilient cities that could meet present and future challenges, where citizens understand ecological sustainability, carbon neutrality, counteracting and adapting to climate change. Because of the limited time today, I would just give a very short and simple introduction of the three main elements of smart green resilience, people oriented, contemporary relevance, and future proof. People oriented, cities are for citizens. And Professor Chen have uh, you know, talked about city and town and the meaning of city and town you know, uh, in Chinese. But the word you know, in, in English, city, actually come from Silvis, the classic Latins, by research of uh, Professor Mi Kam mm of Chinese University of Hong Kong. And Silvis come from Silvio. Silvis would mean civilization. That is to say cities are for citizens. So cities are for peoples. And as said by the founder of Human Development Report, Mahmoud Ohak, the objective of development is to create an enabling environment for people to enjoy long, healthy, and creative lives. So plan for intervention of city, whether large or small scale, will influence the shape and use of cities for many generations. So with the smart green resilient concept, as a profession, we should plan intervention for city with the future end user in mind and not just the current user and current issue. Heritage and local tradition should be respected and celebrated. This will foster social pride and community bonding. In turn, the social pride and community bonding will build up capabilities within the community so that the members of the community is willing to actively participate in the continuous development of the community and the city for their own well-being and happiness, especially in adapting to change to meet future challenges. For cities to function effectively, there is a need to deal with current issues facing the city as well. Smart green resilience is not just an intuitive thinking, but also a means of introducing relevant intervention that meet contemporary challenges while leaving room for adaptation to future changes. For the smart green resilience approach to cultivate this intervention, the city planning process will need to interrogate contemporary physical as well as intangible system and reorder them accordingly by taking a composite system approach and flexibility in implementation. Modern urban systems are complex and their relationship is intricate and intertwined. Under the city system, individuals interact with the community, economy, and built environment. On a different dimension, Physical urban system interact and respond to each other, affecting individuals and society. Then there is the dimension of intangible system influencing, reacting, and changing physical system, individuals, and the communities. Under the multidisciplinary environment, it is essential to be able to evaluate the effect of proposed changes on the performance of individual systems, and also to understand and assess the impact the change in one system would have on the whole outcome of the development plan. Taking the composite system approach allows practitioners and decision makers to identify emerging patterns under different contexts. Usually within a combination of com complication, a multiplicity of options and dynamic development. This would also help to reveal the interaction between different systems the subsystem and the hierarchy of different parts. The third element of smart green resilience is future proof. While we need to deal with contemporary issues, we must also take future into consideration. We have seen earlier that even great cities cannot withstand the passage of time due to the lack of consideration for future changes to physical, economic, 
and social system of the city. Earlier, we talked about introducing interventions to deal with pressing contemporary challenges. With smart green resilience, we must allow room to continuous social economic fluctuation and environmental changes. To prepare and adapt to future, we should simulate capacity building. Capacity for the physical asset of the city and also the social capacity and economic capacity. We must identify systematic institutional changes to support the social and economic usefulness of physical assets and the physical systems. Now this picture is an aqueduct in Hokkaido, the northern part of Japan. It carry water from the mountain to the town, very similar to the large aqueduct that uh, many of you have visited or seen in Italy. But those aqueducts in Italy, you know, is not carrying water to the town anymore. But they also serve another important function. It is a tourist attraction and still uh, attract a lot of tourists to the town to look at those aqueducts. This aqueduct in Hokkaido is still carrying the water and it's also a tourist attraction. That is to say, for physical asset like this, if you know it's physical, uh, if it's useful life is gone, there might be other uses. So we have to stimulate the social and economic capacity of physical asset. To be prepared and adapt to future, we should harness technology. We could do this by the sandbox approach to leverage the size and scales of development to trial as many alternative scenario and solution as possible. For instance, we could try out the use of EV and AV in Hong Kong, digital financing in a much smaller scale using the baby step to gauge the reaction and whether it is compatible to the local environment and local culture and whether it fit within the local context. And last, I must say that the green deck is really an innovative and futuristic urban intervention project that is truly smart, green, and resilient. And I'm pretty sure that when the green deck is completed, it will become the icon of the future of Hong Kong. Thank you.